this is Off the Pulpit here on Catholic SG Radio. My name is Andre Acha. With me, my co-presenter, Keith Nibrana. And if you're new to this program, well, basically, Off the Pulpit is a talk show where members of our clergy come in to help discuss and share matters of faith with us. As we bring our priests to our humble studio, we hope to get to know them better and perhaps hear their personal perspectives on a topic that we'll be discussing. Now, today's Off the Pulpit is a little different from the usual. Mm. We're not going to be discussing about one particular saint, but really, in fact, we'll be looking at a few different saints. That's right. Now, if you remember, on the 23rd of September, we actually celebrated the memorial of St. Padre Pio. Coming up on the 4th of October, we are going to be celebrating the memorial of St. Francis of Assisi. What's so special about these two saints? Well, other than both being Franciscan, uh, the thing is that they are both stigmatists. That means they bore the stigmata of uh, Jesus on them. But to help us understand a little bit better about this uh, spiritual f phenomenon, you can call it, and what the church has to say about it, we have with us, of course, this man is uh, no stranger to us, Father Emmanuel Noel. Now, Father is from the Order of Carmelites, Discalced, and this time you really see him, huh? Mm. Yeah. Hello, and, everyone. <laughs> and he's also the novice master at the Carmelite uh, Formation House in Pongo. Father, welcome back. Thank you. And um, this time in the face, huh? Literally. <laughs> literally, isn't it? literally. Yeah. In the flesh, <laughs> in, the flesh. <laughs> in the face. It has to yes. be for this topic. Like, for the stigma. Yeah. 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 I'll corporeal. show you mine in a while. <laughs> <laughs> In preparing for this <laughs> topic, yeah, I, know. I can imagine. Okay, so Father, let's get into this. Now, right. in the history of the church, right, yeah. uh, and even in the modern times, we actually have evidence of saints mm. who received the stigmata of Christ. That's right, yeah. I mean, I think the most recent one being, of course, Padre Pio. He is, right? that's right. Yeah. Um, and so let's start with that. What exactly is the stigmata? All right. Well, we hear this word stigmata all the time, but actually that's the plural form of the word stigma. Mm. You know, stigma is the singular mm. form. And if we are more familiar with the definition of stigma in our modern day understanding, if we go to the dictionary, of course, it, it, it represents a mark of disgrace, you know, something that has mm. to do with shame yeah. or to do with dishonor. Right. Um, so in any case, uh, when we actually mention stigmata in the plural, at least in the uh, Christian tradition, we are of course referring to the scars, the marks um, on the body that corresponds to um, our crucified Christ. Mm. So the more traditional understanding or the more traditional markings uh, would be the, the, the sacred wounds of our Lord during His crucifixion. So the hands, the feet mm. and the side. Wow. But um, um, as the stigmatists go in terms of the number uh, documented in the church, um, these scars can also appear in other places, the less uh, um, traditional areas such as the forehead because of the, the crown, crown of thorns. thorns. Wow. Some of the wow, scars actually f are found at the back because of the scourging, scourging. at the pillar. Yeah, but generally, the more mm. traditional um, locations of the stigmata right. are found on the hands palms, um, the feet, and at the side where the lance was pierced. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, um, all that comes with um, bleeding, definitely, of course, pain mm -hmm. and bleeding. So um, the stigmata can come in various uh, forms, in, in terms of the bleeding can come in various forms. Some can be non-stop um, for a certain duration of time. Right. Uh, some are more periodic, you know, that perhaps they only happen on certain feast days right. or only during Lent. Uh, some uh, very specifically from Thursday of the Passion wow, until wow. Saturday evening. So, you know, it's amazing how um, mm. this miraculous phenomenon yes. um, um, is different for uh, different stigmatists uh, who have been given this gift. Mm. Yeah. But what is interesting, I, I when you know when I was also doing my own research because I don't have the stigma, <laughs> definitely, yes. is that the blood type that comes out may not necessarily correspond with the person's blood. What now? Ah. Yeah, so that's really <laughs> divine in that sense, you know. Wow. And, um, so we believe that, that that blood that oozes out from that person during the the yes. bleeding. It's the blood of Christ. Blood of Christ. It's the same blood type. Well, so. Um, 
researchers, uh, scientists, you know, they tried to ascertain what is the blood type of Jesus when he was yes. walking on the earth. You yeah, know? So yeah. I think the general consensus is that it's AB. Mm. Oh. So any of you AB out there, blood of Christ in you, huh? Wow. Yeah, so um, yeah, there have been stigmatists whose blood types uh, didn't correspond with the blood that oozed out from their wounds. Wow. Now, isn't that interesting? Very it's painfully interesting. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's really something extraordinary. Going definitely. On, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. As you delve more into this, you will yes. realize yeah, there's really more than just human effort. You know, God is definitely behind yes. um, this gift. Yes. yes. But this leads me to my next question, yeah. which is burning in my sure. head right now. <laughs> and I'm sure the people watching also are wondering. Well, like why? Like yeah. what is the purpose of the stigmata? Yeah. And does the church fully recognize these stigmata as mm. actually being gifts from God? Correct. Some may say gifts, others maybe even some yeah. sort of a burden. Isn't it? Yeah. Mm. So it's controversial, that's right. for sure. Right. You know? mm. uh, but for those uh, saints who have received the stigmata um, and, uh, and we have some level of documentation with them, um, as we will see later on, as we talk about some specific sins, yeah, right. you will see that many of them um, really uh, see this as a privilege. Mm. You know, so the stigmata, painful and um, scary, you know, to talk mm. about and to witness, is truly a mystical, really a truly a mystical union with the suffering of Christ. Um, this is something that as Christians. Mm. Um, we all have, we all struggle to accept a little bit, you know, mm. like we always ask, why must we suffer, right? As yeah. Christians, why can't we just be happy, joyful, yeah. why must suffering be part of the equation? Correct. But as the true model goes in, in the person of Jesus Christ, he suffered, right. you see? And so if we want to be true followers of Christ, then suffering is part of the equation. I mean, he did say, yeah. take up your cross Precisely. and follow me, right? Luke 9, chapter, Luke 9, 23, he says, take up your cross and follow me. Yeah. And so when our Lord is concerned, you know, for some of those who are truly, genuinely want to follow mm. Christ in the sense of suffering, right. then the stigmata is one of the many ways they can portray that love. Mm. So to the perhaps mm. um, the normal people like us, we might not be disposed or ready for that. But yeah. the Lord knows who are those who want to be truly united in Him, with Him. And in this case, it's a very mystical union. Right. You know, because yeah. you are really sharing the, almost the actual suffering uh, the, of Christ. The yeah. pain, I mean, really, it is, right? It is, yeah. I mean, But then again, okay, so what comes to mind is, you know, when the Lord says, my grace is sufficient for you. Exactly, mm. yeah. So, for people who who experience this, or who have the stigmata, yeah. I mean, the pain that they've gone through, obviously, they were given some grace, you know, to be able yeah. to take that, Suffering. I think we have to believe that these people uh, would have the ability and are already disposed in mm. a way okay. to accept The disposition it. is one. The disposition is one. For and, and, and we might even argue like, yeah, I don't think some of them might even ask for it, you know. They yeah. say, Lord, I want, to, I want to be in union with you. I want to be in yeah. deep contemplation with you, but maybe not this pain. So some of them may not. We don't know. For example, I, I would say like Simon of Cyrene. Yeah. Like he didn't want to carry the cross, yeah. isn't it, right? <laughs> he was just a, a bystander who Correct. was made to carry the cross. But I would argue that God knew that he would be able to. Right. And despite the fact that he didn't mm. ask to share the burden with our Lord, yeah. he was one person the Lord was still able to touch. And he still did it. Yes. He still did it. And so for these stigmatists, the Lord probably knows that they could. They, they love burns so brightly, so so strongly for him mm. that when they actually receive it, they probably recognize the 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 the, the sanctity right. of this mm. gift. So perhaps yeah um yeah we, we don't really know um how the Lord thinks, but I think we would say that these um, saints who have received it um, are those who have a true uh, love for the humanity of Christ, in particularly in his passion, in his suffering. It's something that touches their heart, mm. that the Lord says that, well, in this case, share more with me. Right. And I will say that in the sharing of the stigmata, it's not just 
for the, that particular person per se, because when mm. they receive the stigmata, right. really it's also for the reparation of the sins of the rest of the world. So they really take on an additional burden, you know? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Not just union with Christ, but I'm doing it to save other souls. And wow. when these saints realize the position that they're in, that they are in a position to save others, yeah. they are really willing. Yeah. Yeah. to go for. I, I think yeah. that distinction is really important. If not, some people might wonder, and it did cross my mind as you were sharing that, that right. maybe some people would say, oh, why is Jesus so sadistic? Isn't you know, it? Yeah, like, exactly. I already cool. went through mm. you know, my own yeah. passion yeah. and suffering, yeah. but I also want that you to... That is supposed to have been enough, right? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. That's right. right? Yeah. Mm. But now, I also want you to, to, to suffer in that way. Yeah. But then when you think about it mm. in that context, that they are also participating mm. and yeah sharing. that participation mm -hmm. yeah, mm. once you have that awareness of that participation right. i think it takes it to a different level and like yeah. i said i think many of these saints were already uh, disposed to to being in union with with our lord in many ways in oh, some of yes. our come like saints you know they say if i could go to hell just to save that one soul, Lord, I will do it for you. That is the kind of love they have. Yeah. Can you imagine? I would rather go to hell to save that one soul. Yeah. So I sacrifice myself if the Lord can just save that one soul. Yeah. So there are people out there whose love for our Lord is so genuine and you know and tr truly burning. Yeah. yeah. I can say with all honesty, I'm not there, lah. <laughs> no, I. If that's you also. Very, I think it's very okay. few so of we're us. In the same boat, we try. Yeah. Very few of us. But to answer your second part of the yes. question, does the church recognize all this? Yes, Isn't yes. it right? Yeah. Uh, um, um, I think there are many signs uh, that come out of this uh, stigmata to show that um, it is a gift from God. Like for mm. example, you know, just as um, we can't explain how the stigmata comes about, yeah. we also can't explain how oftentimes the healing also. Uh, happens almost instantaneously at certain moment like suddenly the muscle just go the bleeding just stops suddenly there's right it just heal you know it's, like, it's as if as if uh, of course as like if it never existed never like existed no marks yeah there. as if for example you know the pain is real when it happens let's not uh sugarcoat it right, okay right. the pain is really real but um it has been documented as well that oftentimes when the pain is there and the blood is oozing out there is a certain fragrance that come out you know, ah. blood has a certain yes. metallic smell and yeah, all that. It's a terrible smell. It's a terrible smell, smell. correct. Ion, ion, yeah. Yeah, metallic. Yeah. But um, just like many of the saints who we have found uh, incorrupt, you know, they always yeah. emit a certain kind of floral or fragrance or oh, some sort. Yeah. So um, uh, almost all the stigmatists have been documented to to emit this kind of mm. beautiful odor, you know, wow. a, 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 that is something a very fragrance. a fragrance. Right. Yeah, nothing that is very fetid, nothing that yeah. is you know rotten. Yeah. Right. And the very fact that you know they 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 have a blood type sometimes that is different from theirs. That's right. I mean, says a, a, a lot that the, that God is truly uh, you know the hand that controls all this. This sacred blood we are talking yeah. about. Mm. So, well, as a church. Um, you know, recognize them. I think with with their investigation, with prayer, um, right. we have, of course, mm. uh, clear evidence of some saints uh, in the forefront. You know, right. that are that are genuine, mm -hmm. and only proves um, God's work and you know, miracles in action. And I would say, in that sense, yes, the church um, recognize recognizes. Uh, this. But we are always very careful. Yes. Not there's always people who will yeah. claim. And we'll again we'll maybe yeah, talk a little yeah, bit more yeah. at the end of this uh, uh, session. By the way, mm. your Father, it's said that St. Paul mm. was one to first bear the wounds of Christ in his body. And um. it's taken from, uh, you know, re in reference to Galatians 6 mm. 17. Which, yeah. uh, mm. can, can that be confirmed? Yeah. So. In Galatians chapter 6, uh, verse 17, incidentally, you know, uh, mm. for those of you um, who may not be too familiar with the letter to the Galatians, that line that you quoted, uh, uh, right. uh, maybe the, the line is actually, you know, let no man trouble me for I bear the marks of Jesus on my body. That is right. in uh, chapter 6, verse 17 of the letter to Galatians. Now that mm. line, incidentally, is the second last line of the letter. Yeah. Uh, it's, come, it's already at the end of the letter. So right. the last line actually is, 
peace to all of you, my brothers. You know, that was it. Oh, it's so, so drama. Yeah, very drama. <laughs> so, the problem with that line, okay. which causes confusion, is of course, that after he wrote that in the letter, there was no more uh, explanation of what he meant by that. Because right. the letter ends. That's the second mm. last line of that letter. It's painful already. Like, cannot write anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. The point is, of course, he left it as it is. Right. So, therefore, we need to understand it in context. How did it even come about? How yeah. did it come about? So to keep the story short though, you know, that letter, uh, as per particularly in that chapter 6 of that letter, he mm. was uh, addressing the issue of those um, whom they call uh, Judaizers or something like that, you know. These are the people who are uh, advocating circumcision still. Uh, ah, they say, you know, okay. in order for you to be a follower of Christ. So they accept Christ. They were Christian Jews. Yeah, Christian yeah. Jews, but they still wanted to put in all yes. these extra laws or, you know, bring right. all the old laws in again. And so, um, Paul is just saying, look, all this circumcision, you know, uh, mm. is in a way, you're just, it's a boasting of your flesh. If you really want to boast, if you really want to be a true follower of Christ, it's not about marks on your body, like circumcision, because circumcision yeah, is yes. a, a physical action, Absolutely. isn't it? So he says, no, at the end of the day, you know, to be uh, in union with our Lord is to share in the triumph of the cross. And it doesn't necessarily mean bodily or physical manifestation ah, okay. of, of scars, of, of, in this case, uh, circumcision. So, yeah. we believe then, even St. Thomas Aquinas also believed that, you know, um, as we understand Paul's mindset, he really wasn't referring to any stigmata marks on his body. And of course, in none of his letters did he ever even mention the word stigmata. Did he right. ever mention wounds of Christ or even describe where the scars on the yeah. body are. So, but he did talk about the thorn in his flesh. Oh yeah, well, that, that thorn in the flesh, in a way, yes, uh, to, the Lord says to keep you humble. Yeah, 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 about yeah, it, yeah. But I, it wasn't it's not, it's not necessarily something physical, physical, right? Possibly yeah. not, yeah. Ah, so in any case, that one-liner, yeah, has uh, intrigued many. <laughs> the one that you mentioned, yeah. uh, in Galatians six seventeen, yes, intrigued many. But I think we can safely say that, no, Paul uh, was likely not uh, mm. Stigmatist, right? You know, I think he suffered enough, lah. Poor chap, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shipwreck, yeah. yeah, yeah. flogging <laughs> here and there. In that sense, so, no joke, yeah. yeah. You know, so yeah. So, so he's not the first one. Therefore, so, okay. I we believe that the first documented one would mm. be Saint Francis. Francis himself in right. the 13th century. century that would yeah. be the more. Um, uh, properly, here. yeah, documented right. one. Right. And after St. Francis, we have like a whole slew of, uh, right. of uh, stigmatists. Um, today, I think we number about 300 plus. Uh, I think there are more, but about 300 plus at least um, in the archives of the church. Oh, wow. And of that, about 60 plus, I think, are already beatified okay. as uh, either venerable or, you know, saints oh. or whatever. Yeah, right. so they've been beatified. Yeah. And about 80 over percent of them are women. Oh! Uh, oh, Why are women. That, uh? Yeah. I, and if you ask me, I think that at the end of the day, anybody... There's no gender bias. Correct, like anybody who wants to be in <laughs> yeah. union with Christ, Why not? this yes. suffering is accessible to all. Yeah, and Definitely. That's interesting. And, mm. and I think, you know, we, we all agree that women can be really more religious than men. No, typically, as, typically, and, yeah. and, and yeah. apparently, it's also said that the woman, the woman's body, because of childbearing, mm. is able to the threshold for pain. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. and that's why mm. um, many years ago, mm. uh, NASA actually made uh, uh, they actually did a research, and they said the most perfect astronaut would be a woman. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, oh. because of of of. The, the kind of uh, pressure that is on the body, yeah. the woman's body is best yeah. suited for it. Oh. Mm. And yet we sent Neil Armstrong into it. And yet we sent Neil Armstrong. Separate matter. Okay, back, to topic, back to the topic. Yes, okay. come. So, we, you mentioned something like 300 plus, people, plus, plus yeah, documented. Yeah. Okay, mm. but we can't go through all of this. Not at yeah, 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 That yeah. can be yeah. one whole series by itself. <laughs> yeah. um, but, okay, let, let's hear the stories of some more notable scenes. Sure. Within, mm. You know, given this special gift. For sure. And, okay, j just to clarify also, yeah. 
there's apparently such a thing as visible and invisible stigma. stigma. So, mm. like with Paul earlier, I, I think it's concluded that there was no visible None whatsoever. Yeah. Okay. But maybe invisible stigma? Yeah. Maybe? So, oh. we believe that there are there is a distinction. Um, yeah. Also because of some of the saints okay. who have um, written or recorded in their own diaries, their own experiences, you know, mm -hmm. so they have actually mentioned that uh, it could have started off um, as a visible sign, yeah. but uh, because it attracts attention, of course, can you walk around with blood stains yeah. all the time, yeah. you know, so in, in a way of uh, still being willing to suffer for Christ, but without wanting to draw unwanted attention mm. in the form of humility also for the person. They have beseeched the Lord to say, Lord, you know, um, I'm willing, yeah. but can you make it invisible? Meaning to say, ah. don't oh. manifest the bleeding. So some of them actually suffer excruciating pain without the visible marks, you see. Wow. In fact, some saints uh, have then experienced both versions. First the visible one and later on to the invisible one. And My they have goodness. documented that the invisible version is actually more painful because the visible ones, there's an outlet, right. so to speak, for right. the yes. pressure, for but, the pain that's right. to come out, you know. But the invisible one, My gosh. the invisible version like is the one, hemorrhaging. in a way, in a way. And that's yeah. terrible, you know. So... Yeah, the, the invisible mm. one can be actually uh, greater and uh, more significant in, in, in terms of the suffering and the pain. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, sorry, Father, I have to ask this. Uh, <laughs> by pain, we're not necessarily meaning also that the person's health also is at risk, right? So, like in the case of mm. internal stigmata, it's not like the person is like going to die. Like his health is at stake also, right? Or is it unknown? I, well, I, I have to admit, we, I wouldn't really know. Mm. Uh, but for example, St. Francis of Assisi, when he actually uh, received it at the beginning, and even Padre Pio, you know, that, that very moment, they really felt like they were going to die. Because right. it, it's, mm. it's the, the first experience of it would have been torturous. I mean, yeah. look at our Lord on the exactly. cross. You know, you, yeah. you, you, how long can't you go through that kind of comment but yeah. they also documented as well as that you know when they cried out to the Lord that you know that there was that sense of um, divine assistance to help them yeah. we say if the Lord had not come to my help yeah. you know I, I, I you know my heart would have burst out of my chest for example mm. yeah yeah nonetheless wow. whether it's invisible or mm. visible mm. whether you get the stigmata or not we always have to remember it's the prerogative of God yep. he knows what's best at, at, at the end of the day, you know, it's not really for us to, uh, like, oh, God give me this gift or, you know, if you are disposed, if you are truly surrendered to the Lord, mm, mm. and I think these, these saints that we will discuss uh, very quickly now, mm, will yeah. we'll shed some light on this. Okay, yeah. okay. okay thanks right. for the clarification. Yeah. Okay, continue, discuss. So who should we begin first? We Padre Pio, how about that? Yeah, huh? okay. Sure. Padre so, Pio. exactly, Padre Pio. I mean, since we mentioned him so much, and I mean, it's apparently he had it for 50 years. 50 years? Oh my gosh. No, I need that 50 years every day. Every day? Every day. Wow. And, and, yeah. <laughs> every day. We have one mosquito bite, we cannot tahan already, okay. you know. I've you, you got yeah. one here in my palm. <laughs> oh, yeah, we yeah, have yeah. an ulcer Scratch. in our lips, and oh, sometimes we. The closest, right, for me was when I, I was um, <laughs> I was in hospital for, for 14 days. And and every day they were pumping, oh, um, yeah. They were pumping stuff into my, my my veins, and it's painful. I'm sure it is. Every seven hours, you know, that was the cycle, and it was for fourteen days. Oof. Already, yeah, at the end of it, I was like, oh my goodness! First of all, there were not enough of veins for them to find, <laughs> and, and so I can only imagine if this every day for on a daily years. basis. Yeah, of course, we don't know on every day like what's the duration. Okay, what le and also yeah, at, at what level, degree, right? Yeah. And, yeah. But just but still, generally speaking, fifty years every day, more or less. It is said, though. I mean, uh, mm. of course, all this I can't verify, right? But it is said that he lost almost a cup of blood. Each day. 
Wow. To that amount of quantity, of course, we don't know how big your cup is. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, uh, whatever it is, you know, okay. small cup or big cup, yeah, or yeah, crying yeah. out loud, this okay. is okay. no okay, joke. Okay, he's Italian. Cannot be espresso, cappuccino, that taste size. Wine glass, also. Yeah, that, that's. <laughs> yeah, but but it, that don't matter. That don't. Ah, uh, I mean, that's besides the point. Right? Just I think fifty years. That is. Yeah. But what makes, of course, Padre Pio, um, you know, very significant in this is that he's really our only Catholic priest who yeah. has the stigmata. Oh. Uh, For some yeah. of you who might be confused that, hey, yeah. what about St. Francis? Of yeah, Lassie? he was a deacon. He was a deacon, huh? so he was never a priest. That's right. So Padre Pio is the only Catholic priest, actually. Ah. That's why I mentioned that actually many of the rest were women. Catherine of Siena, I That's think these four notable yes. names, yes. Huh? Okay. Catherine of Siena and... Um, Saint Faustina. Faustina. She too. She and the and the amazing thing between this uh, about these two women that again shows that uh, it is a sign from God is that these two women died at the age of thirty three. Ah. Oh wow! Oh my goodness! <laughs> now I mean these are not mere coincidences if you ask me. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, they yeah, died yeah. at the age of thirty three, the very age that we believe our Lord also yeah. gave up His life for humanity. Thirty three. So. Come on, if you tell me that all this is wow. like, uh, you know, coincidence, huh? coinci yeah. The hand of God is, is so clear and in your face so oftentimes, mm. it's hard not to believe. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, it will take a lot to believe as well as disbelieve. Correct. Yeah. You know? But we're coming back to uh, our yeah. dear St. Pius, of course, yes. um, while we said that he suffered almost every day, or every day, mm. for 50 years, but it mm. was more intense during Holy Week. Particularly, he's the one of those yes. from Thursday yeah. to Saturday where it bleeds almost incessantly. Correct. So I believe the pain, again, not sure what level of pain, yes. you know, whether it's as if the the feeling of the, the nails going through, mm. I, I really cannot imagine and Goodness. I don't want to guess or make, you know, um, yeah. guesswork, but yeah. I'm sure it's not something that you can uh, you know, take lightly. It's, it's something probably very, very painful. Yeah. Yeah. I think the other reason also, you know, that uh, mm. Padre Pio is more commonly known mm. uh, is also because he was just he died in just in the last He's our century. modern day saint. Yes. Yeah, a very really, modern day saint. I was actually in primary too. Were you? Yeah, in 1960, when he passed away. In That's quite some time ago. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> barely 60 plus years. <laughs> That's true. But you know, I mean, but the thing is, I mean, because I remember at that time, uh, devotion to him was really building. Yeah. And then we had many prayer groups named Padre Pio uh, prayer groups yeah. that yeah. sprouted up in the different parishes. Yeah. So his canonization was unprecedented in a sense. Uh, uh, it was quite uh, fast. Very fast. Yeah. Okay, maybe I'm not sure if it's unprecedented per se, but fast. Definitely yeah. fast, right? In All within times, our yeah. lifetimes. Yeah, yeah. In modern times is very fast. And, um, and he's also one of those, of course, uh, whom we believe the Lord lived in him, in, the pers in Persona Christi, in, in his confession, in his love for the people through the confession. That's right. And of course, his, um, him bearing 50 years of the stigmata says, Definitely. Yeah. He's also one of those I mentioned earlier who actually asked the Lord to say, Lord, if you're going to give this to me, you know, I accept the pain, but take away the outward um, manifestations ah. of it. So he's actually one of them. Oh, you he know. did actually ask the Lord. Yeah, so, uh, uh, but I think there were still clear signs that he constantly yes. bled. And it was also documented as well because modern day science we have better documentation compared yeah. to all the saints of yesteryears. That's right. Yeah, so apparently the scars uh, and all that disappeared just a couple of years before he passed on. Right. So that could be a sign. I don't know. But, yeah. but apparently the other pain that he suffered mm. was a spiritual pain when he was told that he could not celebrate Mass for a certain amount of time. There's always uh, the pain of a, a good, of a good and a true priest. Yeah. You know? Yeah. To not be able to, and that was a rule. I mean, yeah. And he had to do that out of obedience. Huh? Mm. And obedience, I will say, uh, will be something I will talk about at the last part when we sum up oh, about this stigmata. I will yes. talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, that is you This poor man is already in pain, and then yeah. you become a priest to celebrate. Mm. The Mass, mm, yeah. which is the supreme celebration, right, of, of the Lord's sacrifice. 
Yeah. And to not be able to do that? Ay -ay. Mm. Poor man. Oh, he's cl clearly a saint, um, you know, that, that cannot be disputed, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk a bit about St. Francis. Sure. Uh, he, well, his feast is, of course, uh, coming mm. up. Uh, we all, yes. We all know that. Um, and he's in the 13th century, so he's like the, our first, um, almost, we, we can say, the confirmed case you right. know, of, mm. a, of, a, of, a, of a stigmata. So, um, there's a lot of uh, easy access to information you can get you know, on how he received it. But in a nutshell, um, mm. he... He had this vision while he was on this mountain called uh, La Verna. That's why we have a hospital, Mount Alvernia. Yeah, ah. so, so on this Mount La Verna, that's where he, he was privileged with a vision of a seraph, you know, with ah, six yes. wings. Right. Yeah? And in this vision, he saw that when the seraph um, opened up his wings, um, the crucified Christ was in the middle, you see. Wow. But, uh, so at that very moment of this vision, um, at least what, that's what his autobiographer wrote as they talked about St. Francis, was that he, uh, he meaning St. Francis, was filled with both joy and sadness at this vision. Mm. Joy, of course, mm. was because he had the vision of our Lord, who he said looked very kindly on him. Right. But sadness because our Lord was crucified in this vision, mm. going through that torment and right. that pain. And so in this vision, it really... Uh, um, brought St. Francis to a deeper love, an even greater interior union with our Lord. Mm. And after the vision disappeared, he received that stigmata, you know, because mm. apparently um, from the seraph, it shot some darts of arrows right. towards him to certain parts of his body. And then from that vision onwards, he, he got it. So wow. he suffered um, two years. Wow. Uh, compared to Padre Pio, 50, but two years, yeah. cannot last. So I was two minutes also cannot tahan. Yeah. Huh? So right. two years is still significant, let's put it that way. Huh? Very, yes. very significant. But somehow yeah. for, mm. for St. Francis, it's sort of, in a sense, come full circle. Huh? Because when he got the message, by our Lord, restore my church, uh, yes. in, in experiencing the the. the the pain mm. of the crucifixion in his own body, yeah. in a sense, was a sort of, also a form of restoration. You're absolutely right, no, Andres. That's a very good point because, um, contrary to what many people think, that Pentecost is the birth of the church. Mm. Ah. It is not. It is when our Lord hung on the cross and when he was pierced That's at right. the side, and blood and water gushed out. That is where the birth of the church truly begun. Right. Because when Christ in his human body gave up his life, yeah. and if we're going to wait until Pentecost before the church is come, what's happening within those 50 <laughs> yeah. days, right? No, the Lord, the Lord gives the church immediately in, in, the, in his absence, so to speak. Right. Mm. And so for that message, you know, you, Francis, restore my church, and to receive that stigmata, yeah. which means that you are in union with our Lord at the moment of his crucifixion, at the moment of his piercing, you are really, you know, obeying the Lord in saying, I'm going to restore your church through this manner because you gave us the church at that moment when you were pierced by the lance. I receive now on my hands and on my feet, mm. you know, the stigmata, that pain that brings forth the restoration of the church. So wow. it links in very beautifully, actually. It's mm. so a very good point on, on your part, actually. Wow, thank you. I mean, but it just, yeah. it just somehow made sense. It is. It just made yeah. sense. Mm. Wow, okay. Um, who else? You know, okay. You you mentioned Saint Faustina. Yeah. I, I mean, mm. she's a very modern, uh, young saint, so to speak. Yeah. I never really knew that she had. Yeah. The so stigmata. she's one of those whom uh, don't want to publicize. Ah. You know? Okay. The mm. other, of course, is Catherine of Siena as well. And you will see that the genuine stigmatists right. will not go about telling the world that they have the stigmata. Right, right. And this will be a, one of the, our clear signs of the authenticity mm. of a stigmatist. Ah. Right? Because like anything that's always of course, yeah. real and fake. Uh, today yes. we, are not, we, are, we are no stranger to spams and scams and, and all kinds. So St. Faustina, St. Catherine of Siena, they all received the stigmata, but they were very quiet 
about it. Right. Um, they were very quiet about it. And we also remember um, in often times, even though um, the stigmata seems to be very more common among the women, mm-hmm. but women tended not to have credibility, especially in the earlier parts of uh, society, if you recall, right? During uh, the time of Jesus, yeah. for example, yeah. yes. they yeah. have no status, uh, you that's know? True. Even in the time of Catherine of Siena, even in the time uh, of, of, uh, of uh, all the great saints, like in, in the time of uh, Ignatius of Loyola, you have all the mm. great saints, Teresa, of course, my Carmelite saints, yes. all around that time. That's but right. people always viewed women with suspicion. So even if they were really holy, yeah. they were really genuine, yeah. they couldn't be too mm. obvious about it. Because they might be seen to be, you know, with a you know diabolical, prideful, or prideful yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. yeah. So many of these things come as a surprise, to mm. be honest. Also to me, you know, as we read up and we research, and I research yeah. myself, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, because it's not something, and and that shows the true humility of a stigmatist. And that's what you see even Padre Pio say, look, I, I, let mm. me suffer for you, but can I not tell the world? Mm. I don't want it to be like that. Wow. But sometimes I suppose it's good for the world to know. So if the world needs mm. to know, the Lord will give you that avenue. Mm. So it's not for us, humanity, to look for that opportunity. Or make that know, decision. Make that, that decision. Matter. Make mm. that decision. But rather it is, uh, uh, it's, it is the Lord's prerogative that, that the right moment at the right time, and so often, you know, it's at the death of a great saint that mm. everything that was mm. good is unearthed. Yeah. You know, yeah. or anything that was uh, fantastic becomes only evident after. Absolutely. So these are some of the yeah, yeah. examples of great saints who have really lived a hidden life, stigmata-wise, as well as their own you know, great yeah. love and spirituality. Mm. And I suppose also, by that token, there would be some who, some stigmatists who are never known. Oh, as, yes, I suppose know, so. I suppose so. Yeah, if they didn't write it in the journals or the right. people didn't... Yeah, and on that note, we probably have so many more saints in heaven that we have never heard of. Exactly. And look at all the martyrs who have died for their faith yeah. in other parts of the world. You yeah. know, they are not recorded, yeah. but the Lord knows them. Mm. And I think that's most important. The mm. idea of the, your name is not necessarily written here in our books, but in the Book of Life up yeah. there. Yeah, I, exactly. I think that... That's, that's all that, that, that matters. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But of course, there are some who want their names oh. to be out there. And ah, definitely. Ah, so okay. we come to this question. Yes. Tell yes. us more about people who may have faked having the stigma. Uh, Terrible, uh, sadly, uh, la. sadly. Sadly. Like all things, that yeah. are, like all things, like all people, we always yeah. have, and even good uh, seemingly good ones. Yeah. So the most um, sadly notorious. Um, um, person that we that is uh, very documented in this case is yeah. this lady called Magdalena de la Cruz in the 16th century. So she's actually contemporary oh. to Ignatius of Loyola, oh, I see. you know, um, Teresa of Jesus and John of the Cross. Wow. So are, she's, she's All around that time, my Yeah, so she's a Franciscan nun and um, um, she also received the stigmata, you know, and uh, in fact, uh, initially she was already regarded as a living saint ah. because as she conducted her life, she really um, caught the attention of the people as a really uh, pious nun, mm. one that really uh, gives off her life to God, right. you know, yeah. um, and, and in, in, in many things that she has done, she, she caught the attention of the world. Right. Oh. But there were already some level of red flags oh. th- then. Okay. And Ignatius of Loyola, for example, was already weary of her. And oh, there were so some he signs. had heard of her? Yes. Ah. So what are some of the signs, you know, when we know yes. that it's fake? Today, when you know it's a fake call, if it's, you know... De La Cruz, yeah. was, she, was she Spanish? She was Spanish. Okay, Spanish yeah. and Ignatius nine, yes. himself being Spanish. Yes, yes. But what was it that... that yeah, what, what gave yeah. it away? So... A few things gives it away. For example, you know, she was not discreet about her spiritual life. So she was, okay. you know, at every opportunity she could show people the stigmata, oh. she could tell of her, she would do so. Mm. So she's not so discreet in that sense. So mm. there was a bit of a red flag because a, a, a real stigmatist, as we already discussed, yeah, would, would, wouldn't want yeah. this kind of attention. Yes. You know, I suffer quietly for the Lord and for the conversion of sinners. It doesn't mm. have to be 
are you know publicized. So yeah. that was that one red flag. Mm. And number two, you know, um, she was also gifted with visions, revelations, and the gift of prophecy as well. Oh. And so she, it was even mentioned once that uh, she had a vision of Our Lady. Okay? She had a vision of Our Lady. And she said, oh, Our Lady smiled at me. But then she said to some of her other nuns who, who were already skeptical of her, so not everybody was on her boat, uh, on mm. her side. Yep. But she told these nuns who were opposing her, she says, but, but in my vision, Our Lady scorned at you. I oh. saw Our Lady scorned at you. Our Lady will never do something <laughs> like that, right? So for you to have a vision of this nature, yeah. where Our Lady scorns at somebody, yeah, you have to be a little bit skeptical not, not already. She wasn't very consistent. Oh. But the oh. problem was, why she managed to get away with all this, was because her, even though there were red flags and telltale signs, it was tricky. Because more often than not, she, she exhibited a really religious yeah. and pious life. Mm. She was willing to do menial work, you know, she yeah. was, you know, doing good things. So, but when you, but these little instances are telltale yeah. signs. Yeah. Yeah. But again, how do we of course eventually know that she was a fake? I think that's Correct. the key question, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, at the end of the day, she confessed. Ah. She confessed. Before she died, she made a very contrite confession and this is what happened apparently 40 years ago she made a pact with the devil <gasps> she made a pact with what the that? devil so there were two demons who took possession of her and because of this demonic possession of her she was then able to prophesy See, yeah, because I was going to ask whether these, these prophecies were verified. Exactly. Right. So some of her prophecies actually also came true mm -hmm. that got a lot of people you know, to believe in her. Like for example, mm. she prophesied the death of King Ferdinand. Ah. And, it, and it came true yeah. at that moment when she said, okay, King Ferdinand is going to die next year. And it happened. So when it happened, you know, right. everybody wow. started to like, wow, yo, she must be yes. genuine. Mm. She must be she, real. A prophecy about the king. Exactly. And well, this is the most interesting part as well. She also claims that she was immaculate. Uh, she was uh, pregnant in an immaculate way. So the bishop of Seville had to verify, like, wait a minute, you know? Yeah. How can it be? And apparently they sent, you know, like um, very experienced midwives and all that. Yeah. And apparently she really was pregnant. And. She claimed, she meaning a Sister Magdalena de la Cruz, claimed, uh, and, and, and this is not, I think nobody saw this, but she gave birth to this child on Christmas. And then the child after that wow. disappeared upon her birth. Okay, I, I so, have so many questions. I know, right? I know, right? But you see, it can be believable because of her pact with the devil. So I'm coming to my key point right now. Mm, yeah. This is where we have to be very careful. Yeah. Because the devil can mimic, can ape everything that God does. Yeah. Everything. The only thing that devil mm. can't do is to bring you peace and love in your life. But the devil can make anything that God does. He can even transform himself as to the even, divine mercy. And to even to suffer. Yes. So wow. she did all that, you know, because mm. the devil was able to do it on her behalf. Wow. So we have to be very careful, movie. exactly. And so what is the, the, the thing that we have to know um, whether a stigmatist is mm. authentic or not? It's going back to what I said earlier on, obedience. Right. Ah. Obedience and humility. Obedience where if you're a mystic, if you are someone who claims to have mystical union with God, you must verify it with a priest. You must have a proper spiritual director. You mm. must... Acknowledge that God speaks through your spiritual director yeah. and guides and journeys with you. Sister Madalena never had one. She was not obedient to anyone. Oh. So she was a prioress. She was a... Yeah. Oh, she prioress. herself was a prioress. Yeah, so oh, she was no, also no. elected prioress. So I she was like a see. queen bee of yeah, her own yeah, hive. Exactly, you know yeah. what I mean? And so when you have no humility, when you have no obedience, these are telltale signs that mm. it doesn't come from God. So you may be able to work wonders. Yeah. It might look amazing, but the fruits that come out of it are clear. Yeah. They're telltale signs. Yeah.
and you have people who are suspicious of you, it doesn't, it brings unease. Yeah. These are yeah. telltale signs. So the good thing that came out of it, if like let to if you want to make this a, a nice story, there were good things that came out of it. Right. That okay. despite the fact that she had a pact with the with the devil, many people actually were converted. Converted and praised God and be, became fervent in their faith for God. Okay. So it kind of backfired, I don't know. Balances of backfires. Yeah. I mean, God found a way to turn it. Yeah, so these people because through her they had great devotion to God, the people, mm. you know? And of course, the, the, the best thing I think I, I, I would like to end where, where this uh, uh, spam or scam uh, stigmatism is mm. concerned is that Sister Magdalena de, de la Cruz herself was genuinely and fully contrite mm. in her confession, oh, okay. in which the Lord eventually released her from the bonds of the devil. Ah. And so she, I mean, the church believes and wants to believe that she died at, at, at peace with God, at rights with God. And I think that's a great yeah. thing because at the yeah. end of the day, yes, you did something foolish, but if so, you are genuinely contrite, the Lord will never forsake you. Right. And I think she displayed that humility eventually, mm. that obedience yeah. eventually, and God saved her. Wow, wow. But that, again on that note, don't mess around yeah. with the evil one. Yeah. Never, ever try, you might not get yourself out of it. So let's say, Father, on this, so on this quite serious note, yeah. I ask you this yeah. final question. I actually sure. close this. Sure. Very interesting discussion. I mean, how then, uh, in today's context, how do we make sense of yeah. this miraculous gift? Mm. Mm. And I'll, I'll just throw in a little bit more. Yeah. Of course, some people watching this or listening to this may be wondering, should I be praying for this? Uh -huh. you know? yeah. Uh, yeah. Good or... question because that would, <laughs> that would have been my answer anyway. Ah. Okay. Like all gifts, we should never ask or pine or pray for, but we always pray for to, to surrender to the Lord that you give me whatever is necessary. Right. So in the, in, in, since our topic was on a stigmata, we should never ever be praying and asking God, God, give me this gift. That's one mm. thing, it's a total lack of humility. Why do you mm. want it? Why mm. do you want it? Because in our normal everyday life, you and I out there who do not have supernatural powers, we are just simple people trying to make ends meet each day. Mm. Yeah. Mm. We can be in union with Christ's suffering without having to go through or, or having to receive any special gifts, but simply just finding Christ in the people who are stigmatized by society. How many of these people who yeah. are stigmatized by society, and I'm not really talking about yes. the mass, yeah. Yeah. who need our help? Exactly. Uh. So the stigmata is a gift that God gives you because He knows your ability. But for each and every one of us, we can suffer. We are suffering enough. Lah, huh? <laughs> without without yeah. any more extra, Absolutely. you know? And suffer with those who are poor, those who are struggling financially, those who are struggling in their sexuality, Absolutely. those who are struggling in their studies, those who are just struggling with everything, identity, their mental soul. health. Yeah. You have no idea, yeah, isn't it, right? Yeah. And I think this is what we do. We meet God through these people. We don't have to be in union with God through a stigmata. Mm. And as, the, as we have seen, you know, that could easily make you prideful mm. and that could just dwindle all the way down. But you can do the simplest thing in the most humble way uh, with the people around us. And I think that is enough. And St. Francis, if we follow the heart of him, since we're going to celebrate his great feast, yeah. was just to be with the poor, be with those who need help. So if, as I say in my homilies oftentimes as well, you just, just give a smile to that foreign worker who is sweeping your corridor outside, you know? Mm, sure. Just give a wave and say thank you to the two men who are clearing your trash in your garbage chute in your HDB flat. Absolutely. You're, we don't ask you to open organizations. We're not asking you to run charity events. Simple daily things, holding the leave door for someone who is coming and not press quickly, press close yeah. so that you know you can... <laughs> you know, these are little things that we, yeah. we can be yeah. so guilty of. And yet we want to be, you know, holy moly in big ways. 
Yeah. It's just recognizing <laughs> the dignity of the human the person, person, isn't it? Absolutely. And sometimes just being so charitable is a stigmata for some people. It's so mm. difficult mm. just to be patient, just yeah. to be a little bit, you know, more giving. I think let's start from there. St. Paul says in the Corinthians, as I end of this one, yeah. you know, if one member suffers, the whole body suffers, That's isn't right, it? Yeah. In the first letter of St. Paul to Absolutely. the Corinthians. That's right. Yeah, so let's not, you know, uh, forget that we are all one body in the Church of Christ. So if you want to suffer for Christ, yeah, then yeah. be more mindful of the sufferings of the other parts of the body, which means yeah. everybody else. And suffering is suffering, lah. so whether you get stigma, it doesn't mean it's some higher form of... Any form of suffering is a level of suffering. Absolutely. Just offer it. Offer it to the Lord. Yeah. And then you are already in union with Him. Full stop. Amen. <laughs> wow. Amen. Simple as that. Yeah. And with that, we come to the end of this really, really exciting conversation. Yeah. I've learned wow. so much, really. Thank and you, Father. So have yeah. I from <laughs> having done a lot. I'm sorry, I mean, you always put you through this. So. Oh, wow, it's a great it's learning curve. Oh, I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Yes, yes. Well, so we want to thank uh, Father Emmanuel Noel, and uh, of course, uh, he's from the Carmelites. And uh, Father is actually the novice master, and so you can tell uh, why he's a. Uh, <laughs> The, the main man out, uh, in the formation house of the Carmelite Formation House in Pongol, uh, the St. John of the Cross community. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you. We really, yeah. you know... Thanks, Andre. Thanks, Keith, for always having me. No, yeah, we're so you. blessed yeah. To, yeah. To, to have you, truly. Yes. And just a reminder, if you're listening to us on our live stream, Off the Pulpit goes out every Monday morning at 8.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. The on-call broadcast of the program is on the same day at 8 p.m. And again on Tuesday at 5 p.m. To listen to our Off the Pulpit podcasts, you can do so on our Catholic SG Radio app, on Spotify, or on Apple Podcasts. So, leaves me to say, my name is Andre Acha, he's Keith Nibrana. Thanks so much for joining us here on Catholic SG Radio. <laughs>